Today I'm going to show you how to blow steam out of your ears. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nays. You can find me on Twitter at AKNaser. Today we got a really sick tutorial. It's going to be pretty easy and it's going to give us a really cool result. We're using an image by Anders, who's one of the winners for last week's humor contest. This image is so cool, so funny. We decided we're going to put some steam blowing out of his ears. Now this is steam that's available in our Pro Texture Pack. We're going to link to that right down below. This is perfect for if you want to put steam or fog or smoke or anything like that into photos. All you need to do is the following steps we're about to do here and it'll make it look great every single time. So let's go ahead and get into it. So here's our image. This is um, Anders. It's really, really awesome. I'm guessing he's looking uh, extremely angry and um, we're going to make some smoke blowing out of his ear. So we've got both of these uh, textures that we photographed. These are high resolution textures available in the, um, in the uh, texture pack. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and use our move tool and we're going to move these into this document here. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, click and drag from one document to another and there we can see there's our new steam. I'm going to just close this one out, command W and do the same thing here click on that one and hit command W as well. Now we're going to F, hit F to full screen. Now I do want to add the steam to the ears, but there's one like quick point that I'd like to make first. Um, it depends on when you're changing a person's skin color, it depends on what you want their attitude to be. Um, and in this case, we have a skin that's a little bit more on the magenta side. So this would be like someone who's maybe asphyxiating. They don't have a lot of oxygen flowing around. So you get that like kind of blue that surfaces forward. If you want anger, usually you uh, push towards like the more orange, the more yellow side. So we're just going to take this and kind of tweak it a little bit. Not to say there's one right or wrong. Those are just kind of like two different scenarios depending on um, what emotion they're trying to get across. So we're going to take this, I'm going to grab an adjustment layer here and we're going to go down to hue saturation. Now I'm going to choose here on my, uh, what I'm going to affect, I'm going to choose my reds and then I'm going to use my eyedropper tool and just click right there on the actual reds we want to change. So now what we can do is I can just change our hue just a little bit over to the right. So we can see this is a little bit more on the I'm dying because I don't have any oxygen and uh, this is a little bit more on the on the anger side. You can also choose things to like darken and, and saturate too. If you want to just go like super, you know, like super <laughs> emotional with it, you can do these things as well. So this is, I think it gets across basically the same idea, just a little bit more of a, um, uh, like a, a natural looking skin tone. So we're gonna, we're just gonna um, leave it just like that. And you could exaggerate that as much as you wanted to. Okay, let's go ahead and get our uh, fog in here. So you can see these textures are huge. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna hit Command T, which is the transform dialog. I'm gonna lock my width and my height, and then I'm just gonna scale these down just a bit. There we go. We'll get them to about right there. We can scale them down even more. I just wanna make sure they're actually in the frame. So we're gonna do the same thing with this. Command T, lock the width and the height, and then just click and drag on either the width or the height and scale those down. Great. They're looking really good. The only thing we have to do now is make sure all the black goes away. And you don't even have to use a layer mask to this to do this. The best thing you can do in Photoshop to get quick uh, to get quick is realize when you can use blending mode sometimes to actually like solve the problem. So if we want the black to go away and we want the white to remain, there's a blending mode that actually does that perfectly and it's called screen. It makes all your blacks completely disappear. So what we're going to do is just change both of these to a screen blending mode. So up here in our blending mode for our layer, I'm going to change this right down to screen and there we see the black disappears. Here we go, same thing here, change that down to screen. So this is a great example of why using a blending mode of your layer can be much more efficient and effective than using a layer mask sometimes because um, not only did we, let's just zoom in there, not only do we have only white visible, but it's masked out perfectly. There's, there's no like rough edges or anything like that. So um, just a great way to do it. Let's go ahead and start off by, uh, we're gonna put this one coming out of his left ear, I think. I'm gonna hit Command T again. We're just going to rotate this right around. You could just click anywhere you want outside to, you know, just click and rotate right around as long as you're outside of the bounding box. And I'm going to hold shift and just drag in there. So we're going to have some of this kind of steam uh, coming out of his ear there. All right, there we go. And we can decide, we can move your little um, control point here and decide which direction you want the steam coming through. Something like that I think looks pretty good. And you can have it like kind of go in his ear a little bit. Well, let's do that. I'm going to have it come in his ear and then we'll just use a layer mask to, to mask it out. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing with this guy. Hit Command T. I'm going to make it about the same size. So what we're going to do is just scale it about to the same size as this other one so I can kind of compare what we've got going on. Okay, about the same size. Now keep in mind this would be coming in 
an ear, which is, you know, if you could see through his head, his ear would be right here. So it's got to come in a little bit more. We wouldn't want it coming out like that because that's not where his ear is, right? It's, it makes sense that this would be kind of covering something up. Looking pretty good. So those are our uh, fog or smoke or whatever you want to call them. Now you can build these up a little bit as well. If I wanted to hit Command J on that, it's going to duplicate the layer. Now, if you wanted to make this a little bit smaller, there we go. So we've got another layer duplicate, and there we've got like another layer layer of steam. It's kind of like coming out, you know, closer to his head or closer to the ear. Or we could do like a, you know, a little bit of steam there in the middle, something like that. If you wanted to do that, maybe lower the opacity. So there's a lot of like fun things that you can do with these sort of textures. It just makes it really easy to kind of work with. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to hit Shift and click on all these three layers and hit Command G. That's going to group them together. Now, instead of putting a layer mask on each one of these individual layers, what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to put a layer mask on the entire group and then just paint black on my uh, layer mask where I want to hide it. So this would be, you know, everything in front of the ear. I want it to look like it's coming from behind this little uh, piece of the ear. I don't, I don't know what that's called. If there are any people who really love ear anatomy out there who know what this little thing is called, I'd love to know. Please leave it in a comment below. And we're like, oh yes, uh, that's my favorite part of the year. I study everyone's ear dongle, whatever it's called. <laughs> you never know. I've fallen in love with weird kinds of things all over during my life too. So I'm right there with you. All right, cool. So that's going to be like coming out of out of his head on this side, and we're just kind of like masking that that right in. Looks good. So the really cool thing about this, because we did these in a group, is I can also Let's say I wanted to move this around. I can move this around, and because it's inside of the group, it's not going to show up where his head is. So we have a lot of options because we used our group instead of each individual layer. You can then move them around, and you're still going to get what you want. So there we have it. Let's just zoom out and see um, what we got there. It looks great. I think the only thing distracting is a little bit of this leaf, uh, this like uh, leaf pattern right behind his head. So I'm going to make those two invisible, create a new layer, and just really quick with a clone stamp tool, I'm just going to clone stamp this away. Uh, and the reason here is it'll it'll allow my uh, there we go. We'll just go up up here as well. It's pretty dark. It'll allow the fog or the smoke, or the steam or whatever have it um, to just come through a little bit more clearly. So instead of distracting, it's just going to come through a little more clearly. And if you want to do the same, let's just create a new layer. You could get rid of all this too. And again, this is just a a, a style choice. You know, a decision to say maybe we don't want it to be as distracting in the background. Uh, that's a choice that you can make on, on your photograph. There's really no right or wrong whenever you guys edit, guys. It, it's just, um, you know, what you want to say about your photos. All right. I think, you know, getting rid of those distractions help us focus, focuses on, it helps us to focus on our subject as well as the steam. We can see there we're really focused right in on it. So um, that might be something that I would do. I also might change the crop just a little bit. Um, this down here doesn't tend to add to, to the crop. Um, so just like bringing this in, um, there we go. Let's hit this checkbox. And these are just decisions that I'm making. There's no right or wrong. But I feel like cropping in a little bit more, especially because I created this, um, you know, <laughs> this thing with his ears coming out there. You can see there's the before crop and the after. Just kind of has you focus right in on what's going on in the action. And um, yeah, that's it, guys. There we go, adding some steam coming out of people's ears. Couldn't be easier. Thanks so much for watching, Flurn. I hope you had an amazing, amazing weekend. And I flurn you later. I will do that. You, you just wait. You're going to watch another one of these videos. It's going to come. I predict it. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to teach a course on telling the future because I know you're going to watch another Flurn video now. So there we go. Telling the future. <laughs> For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.